Hi everyone, this is Ali. Let's explore some history of HTML and its evolution in this video. Why so much emphasis on history of HTML? What's the point? Well, it's important to get the answer to this question before exploring the history, right? To answer this, it's important to go over history of HTML as it has morphed since its early days and some aspects would continuously be referred to for backwards compatibility reason. And if you are on a journey of web development, better get used to the phrase backwards compatibility as you would keep hearing this all along. To give you some intuition on why history is so important, let's have a look at the graph source from Wikipedia in the background. Note there might be some browsers you may not even have heard about. And in this huge internet market, even 1% is a big number. And if this list is making you dizzy, note I just listed the browser names, there is an absolute ton of versions of these browsers in use. Around 0.6% of Windows users are still using Windows XP, which is around a quarter century old by now. As a web developer, you need to support a lot of variety across vendors and across versions of products from each vendor. So knowing the history is essential knowledge. It's like people watching your Ultra HD movie you produced on a small CRT TV, where in that example, you might be able to shrug them off, but in a competitive web environment where each user might be a potential customer or essential addition to your market share statistics, you can't. Knowing which technology they might be using to consume your website makes a difference of graceful degradation versus an outright crash. And lastly, they might not be insignificant poor folks unable to buy new gadgets. Do consider a lot of big organizations get stuck using old technologies as upgrading apps they got developed a while back from vendors who no longer exist. Though they can certainly buy ultra-modern tech, their employees are stuck on old machines and operating systems as upgrading existing apps to new operating systems can be costly, incur downtime, affect stability, or upgrading to new versions of existing app would mean retraining thousands of workforce who are efficient in using the old system that runs on old operating systems. This is a global phenomenon due to rapid rise of technology in the last few decades, and complaints from such customers are hard to ignore, and backward compatibility would remain a concern for the foreseeable future. Right, so HTML came into being right alongside World Wide Web in 1989 at CERN. In next seven years, its ownership remained with CERN for a while before going to IETF, or Internet Engineering Task Force, another standards organization for the internet, and then to W3C or World Wide Web Consortium, yet another standard organization. What a doozy. By that time, HTML version 3, 3.2, and then HTML4 were announced, each trying to make it more practical and fit for use than its predecessors. The first version, HTML1, which remained in existence for the first four years, was limited to 20 basic elements, including the hyperlink element we saw in HTML introduction video, and was too limited in features and much was desired. The entire web at that time was white and blue as there was little to no customization possible. The second version, HTML 2.0, came about in 1995 and was a significant improvement and became a base standard used by all browsers of their time, supporting changing background, text styles, and introduced tables and text boxes. W3C was formed at that time and took ownership of HTML 2.0 from IETF. It was around then that the web was scaling up and problems really started to surface. Do you recall from earlier videos that an HTML element is only useful if the browser consuming it can interpret and understand it and then display it as intended? To give you an idea of the type of issues faced then and still now, the companies that created browsers and to be explicit, Netscape Navigator browser introduced a bunch of tags called HTML extensions that only they supported and were not part of HTML 2.0. Made sense for them as they jumped the curve and nobody stops you from supporting a tag like my cool tag, which your browser displays differently, but it is a headache for web developer. Not everyone uses the same browser to browse your website. And if you are a website owner with a web page that contains my cool tag in your HTML, your Netscape browser users would be really happy but Internet Explorer users would be horrified to see contents of my cool tag appearing as text in their web page and making it look ugly. And don't forget, we are not just talking personal web pages here. We are talking corporate websites where even minor spelling mistakes are a matter of repute 
and no sensible website owner can ignore my cool tags content appearing within text and words like in most popular browser if you are the corporate boss no wonder the first person you would turn to after getting an angry call from an internet explorer browser user would be your web developer who has done nothing wrong but support the cool functionality for world's leading browser of their time but what about the rest of the folks using the non cool browser even if 80% users use netscape you can't show a horrible looking website to 20% of your user base can you don't forget not even those 80% were using the latest netscape browser so problem was bigger to be fair we can't just paint browser companies as evil here there was a boom and everyone wanted a bigger share of the pie trying to get cool new features to become part of html standard was a slow time consuming process and with severe competition raging no one could afford that in middle of so called browser wars so those companies went ahead and announced new supported tags and features not present in standard html pages using those features looked a class apart from the standard ones in supporting browsers and ugly in others it was a complicated choice everyone was forced to make the solution w3c at that time had the unenviable task of evolving html and ensuring cross browser compatibility if you were using the standard published by w3c you were ensured that your page would look good in any leading browser for non standard features you were responsible for cost benefit certain techniques were introduced to ensure cross browser compatibility and to degrade website gracefully if not supported on users browser we'll look at that later but let's return to history so by 1997 w3c was able to publish html 3.2 which was approved by all significant browsers of that time it also supported forms which are an extremely important aspect of web and you have definitely used them somewhere by now it also supported embedding external objects and supported java applets after a lag of 2 years html 4 came up and introduced among other things css or cascading style sheets which took most of the styling out of html and into css making it much easier to theme an entire website by centralized styling it also had enhanced support for scripting and i am deliberately avoiding discussion of dom and scripts here in interest of time html4 had enhanced forms and scripting support as well though html4 set a very high standard for web development w3c tried to set the bar higher html was based off what we call standard generalized markup language or sgml and not xml folks at w3c thought that resetting base to xml would impose strict adherence to standards and browser and developer would be able to reap the benefit of xml ecosystem in entirety they termed the project as xhtml difference was that xhtml was required to be well formed xml and could be parsed using standard xml parsers unlike html which requires a more forgiving lenient html specific parser xhtml became the recommended standard by w3c in year 2000 with the intent of combining the best of html and xml and taking full advantage of xml ecosystem the idea intent and implementation were great until 2 years later w3c tried to introduce xhtml 2.0 XHTML 2.0 was different than its predecessors. It was a great idea for more strict and modular version and suggested to remove all presentation elements from HTML in favor of CSS, resulting in complete separation of structure and presentation, hence delivering device independence. The new language was more complex and difficult to work with than earlier HTML versions. It might have survived the cost benefit analysis for most. As a web developer, I consider myself sold until now. until one teeny tiny detail unlike all its predecessors until now it wasn't backwards compatible for those of you thinking so what and who cares well web was the biggest thing in the world at that moment and everybody cared there was an uproar and lot of web developers simply refused to shift to new standard many in industry blamed w3c of abandoning html and being married to xml idea at cost of evolving html already under fire for being slow in developing web standards and now attempting to break internet with suggestion of an incompatible standard in 2005 the web hypertext application technology working group or what wg formed independently of the w3c 
to work on advancing ordinary HTML not based on XHTML. WordWG eventually began working on a standard that supported both XML and non-XML serializations, HTML5, in parallel to W3C standards such as XHTML 2.0. In 2007, the W3C's HTML Working Group voted to officially recognize HTML5 and work on it as the next generation HTML standard. In 2009, the W3C allowed the XHTML 2.0 Working Group's charter to finally expire acknowledging that HTML5 would be the sole next generation HTML standard, including both XML and non-XML serializations. So HTML5, the latest and greatest standard until making of this video, officially came about in 2014. But it was the de facto standard for most web browsers by 2010 anyway, after W3C abandoned XHTML2 charter. With a ton of scripting enhancements and API features, new elements, enhanced rendering, mobile compatibility, an emphasis on structure and focus on interactivity, and of course, backwards compatibility, there are a ton of new features fit for standard being officially announced after 14 years. The latest standard has now transitions from versioning approach to a living standard, which boasts continuous evolution instead of waiting years to become a standard by means of incremental changes while maintaining backwards compatibility with released version. I know I must include history of DOM or document object model, which is how HTML is loaded into memory by browser. That should be part of this video as history of HTML would not be complete without coverage of history of DOM. But DOM has not been introduced in our playlist or on our channel yet. It wouldn't make much sense at this stage, so I shall defer introduction to its history to a later video. With that historical and essential background, let's move back to HTML documents. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing to be notified of upcoming new content. Thank you. Goodbye.